Hi everyone, it's Joe Duffy from Keypoint Market Analytics and today is Tuesday, May the 18th. Uh, we did an update over the weekend this week purposely because I wanted to see Monday uh, and see what was going to happen there. We thought it might be a little more useful if we waited till now, which is uh, midday on Tuesday before we uh, updated. Okay, what we've got up here is the uh, S&P E-mini uh, for our first chart and it's a daily chart. and. Um, as you can see, what we expected when we talked to you last week is for the market to come back into the bands, which it, it obviously did do, got up back to 1275, and then we said it would probably test the bottom of the band, and uh, it probably hold that on the second test. And as you can see, that's exactly what it did. And um, you know now we're sort of back, uh, you know, certainly in a downtrend on the daily chart, but uh, back within the bands, and we would expect that that con condition is going to persist. So even if the market does come down a little bit, I would be very surprised to see it start trading outside the bands again. Uh, this anomaly here um, was a one of for now, and I don't think we'll see it again uh, very close back to back. Uh, my 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 position on the S&P is it's probably going to chop around a bit. Uh, I don't think that it's going to, you know, crash or anything like that. And I could still see us uh, having a summer rally that takes out these highs that we made uh, in April, uh, taking out that 1220 level or so. Okay, let's uh, take a quick look at the weekly and see if that's telling us anything on the S&P. Okay, uh, similarly, uh, you know, again, outside the band here on the, uh, on the, uh, uh, the weekly S&P, very unusual. Um, you know, we could come down to test the bottom of that band again in the S&P on the weekly, which would be, um, you know, that 1090 area or so. Uh, that wouldn't surprise me, but I'm kind of thinking that's probably a worst case scenario at this point. Um, you know, trends uh, turned over. Um, our oscillator, our, our trend and retrace oscillator, hasn't any shown any significant amount of green dots, so it can certainly come down down in here uh, and give us a buy signal, which will probably be uh, uh, conjunctive with the uh, testing of the bands. Our scoop oscillator is, uh, you know, it's in buy territory right now, although <clears throat> it's not a buy just because it's down here. Uh, we need some sort of breakout. Uh, um, uh, for the market to follow before we would have a buy signal. So the scoop oscillator is just a precondition. Okay, let's have a look at the bonds. Okay, these are bonds weekly chart now. Uh, you know, we've said for uh, two or three weeks ago that we expected these highs to get taken out here at uh, 121 or so. Uh, and they were a little more quickly than we thought, but but back down here when the market was in the 116s, I think we were one of the few people that were were bullish on bonds and and said at the time, I know everyone think interest rates are going up, but bonds tell us that they're also going up, which means you know either rates are going down or there's going to be some sort of shock to the system. So anyway, bonds uh, have gone up. You can see in the weekly they're they're banging their head along the top of the channel here, and uh, that's not a place where I like to participate. Uh, so even though bonds could continue to inch their way up, um, I think right now they're really a, a no man's uh, land on the weekly chart. Let's look at the daily and see what we f we find here. Okay, similar thing. Uh, you know, bonds went outside the band, come back in, and then go up and test the top of it. And that second test almost always holds. So it's usually a good time to to take a counter trend position, or um, if that's the kind of trading you like to do. Uh, not much else that it's telling us right now. Uh, still in an uptrend. Uh, I would need to see it lower before I would buy it, um, but I uh, certainly wouldn't be selling it up here either. Okay, quick look at the euro. The euro uh, was a bit tricky because uh, we we did get down to that 125 level and then back to 131, and I really thought when we got outside the band here, and uh, you know we came back in. I really thought this test back to the band uh, would not get through again. I was really surprised to see us fall out the bottom last week. Um, that's certainly pretty bearish, that's for sure, um, in terms of uh, a longer term perspective. And if we stay down here, you're starting to see whether we're getting a series of red dots. Uh, and we're pretty much we're getting pretty close to the point where if we get a couple more. Um, 
the first retracement is going to be a pretty strong sell. So uh, right now, I certainly um, give the trend its head uh, way, way outside of the bands here, and you can't be uh, selling it there. So I wouldn't be shorted, but I'm now at this point we have to look for a retracement to uh, uh, to sell it again. Okay, just in summary, oh, let me look a quick look here at the weekly euro and see what we're saying. See if it's giving us any further added insight. Okay, similar thing. We're starting to get a lot of red dots on the uh, on the weeklies here. So, it, what's it telling us is that this whole thing isn't over yet. Although, I, like I said, I'm, I'm sh shocked that it didn't hold inside the band on that second try, especially after we had that washout last week. That's a very unusual situation. And uh, although I think the euro is going to going to bounce back up and could certainly bounce up to 130 without really changing anything, um, or even higher. Um, uh, probably the next good rally uh, is probably going to be a sell, sell again. <clears throat> okay, just a quick summary. Uh, S&P, I think that we'll, uh, we'll trade both sides of the market here. I, I think that uh, that recent washout low at uh, 10, 20 or so is, is, is not going to get breached. Um, uh, and uh, the bonds... Nothing to do up there. I mean, uh, of all the markets, I think the bonds represent the least opportunity right here. They're right at the top of the channel. And really, you can't get too excited about substantially lower rates in uh, the market. So nothing really to do with the bonds. Uh, the euro, uh, like I said, shocked me that it's, it's, it's down this far. I uh, hadn't expected it. That's been outside the band once. To go through it again a couple weeks later is surprising. So what that tells us is that not that we can't get a rally, we're probably going to get a pretty good one, uh, just that um, it will be a sell when uh, it starts to roll over again. Okay, that's all we have for you this week. Um, um, thanks for listening, and if you have any questions, uh, Joe Duffy at KeyPointTrading.com. Thank you very much. Uh, have a good trading week.